What's this? A kid update? I think I know what I have to do. Hey there folks, I just wanted to add this in real quick because I forgot the video but already kind of put away my equipment. Forgot to do it in the video but already put away my equipment. Um, Kin Foundation announced another uh, partnership program for devs. A hundred, hundred apps and partners that they're going to be bringing in. So that is a huge deal. That is a very, very big deal. But um, yeah, so that's happening now. Enjoy the video. Well, hello there folks. My name, as you may or may not know, is the Kinformant. I also go by Addison. That's my real name. I feel like that's important to say every now and again, but um, I hope you like that little intro. I uh, clearly have too much time on my hands, which isn't true. I started working, so I smell like pizza right now, which you all can't pick up, but if you want this video, if you want this to really feel like I'm in the room talking to you, go ahead, throw a pizza on the oven. I'll wait for you to get back, and we can enjoy this together. So now that you've made your pizza, I am here to talk about two things that happened today, one of which I'm just going to talk about how I'm not going to talk about it. So we have the product and tech AMA that was posted by Yoel a couple days ago that happened today, Monday at 1230 Eastern time, my time, the only valid time. But um, personally, I don't really feel like it had a lot of information to it. Um, not that it should. I think it served its purpose pretty well. It did what it was supposed to. But there was nothing really, not even to say new to come out of it, but it was essentially, you know, the main things people asked were, um, who's in the Federation? I don't think they answered that. I don't know why. Um, they talked about how, are there going to be more interesting earn and spend opportunities? Because politely, the ones right now are kind of lackluster. And the developers, uh, or rather the product and tech team said, they work with developers. It's up to the developers to create earn and spend opportunities that people want to use more so in their apps. And then they talked a little about the identity layer, which uh, they aren't necessarily going with because they don't want the Kin Foundation to be holding on to everyone's information. It kind of goes against the whole decentralization idea and that rather they will uh, be uh, setting up a mechanism to be able to uh, move Kin between apps and accounts, so to speak, which is honestly, I, I feel like just as important um, because you do run into the issue where if all of your kin is stored in one account and you sign into that with every account, I don't know. I just, I don't like that as much. I like having the ability to kind of keep some kin in each place or be able to move it all into one place, whichever I may choose. And you know what? I may be completely uh, interpreting what I read incorrectly, but that's uh, basically what I got from it. So, you know. D-Y-O-R. But um, they also were asked about the web application SDK, and they said that they're in the early stages of one with JavaScript, and it's been used internally for testing, but they're not really um, near a point where they can release it out to the public. See, I said I wasn't going to talk about it, and now I'm talking about it. Um, and the other big thing that uh, Dr. Boyjoy commented, saying that Kin is a, a walled garden, you have to get approval from the Kin... Uh, KEF to integrate the SDK from the Kin Foundation itself, and uh, kind of how does this reflect uh, the Kin Foundation's feelings or the possible involvement of indie developers and people who maybe just can't do that, so to speak, who can't really uh, pay in with the, all the fees and stuff to be able to make things. And they said that the idea moving forward uh, after this upcoming dev program will be that they will be open for business, so to speak and um, that they will be kind of just letting people in and uh, releasing it publicly so that people can use it outside of those just in the developer program. So now we move to the big deal, the big kahuna. Uh, any other sort of big thing that may exist, uh, the blockchain strategy update, next steps in migrating to Kin blockchain, to the Kin blockchain. Um, now this article, uh, has made me so excited and so happy, which is part of why I went through that labor of making that intro and all this stuff, because my, I don't know, my sense of excitement with Kin has never really gone away, but it definitely kind of faded in a sense. Not that I ever stopped believing in what they were doing or believed that they could do it, but rather the rate at which things were being announced and stuff, I just kind of, you know, was like, ah, this is not great. But 
while this is basically just restating things they already said, this is a huge deal. This is a such a uh, an important document for us to get and for them to kind of come out and publicly say. So I want to start with all of this by saying they said that they're this is basically them offering an update on their strategy and their progress as well as what you can expect in the coming weeks. So this is all stuff within the coming weeks. Um, personally, I would say that's six to eight weeks. You can have your own frame of time for it, but I do think this means that these are things coming within Q1, um, if not, you know, by halfway through Q2. So things that are coming soon and important things that are coming soon. They said, we have a secure, fast, durable infrastructure, can handle high volume transactions, and they've launched the Kin Federation, the group that will support the decentralization of the Kin blockchain. Uh, the group shares responsibility for the security of the blockchain, bringing it closer to a state of decentralization. So what I'm getting from this is that uh, I believe they have to have seven nodes to be officially decentralized according to some group. Um, and what I'm reading from that is that they haven't hit it yet, um, but they should be because they follow it by saying in the coming months, more participants will be added to the Federation, creating it, uh, making it even more secure and decentralized. So uh, you can read into that as you will, whether or not you mean that that means to you that it's decentralized now or not. Regardless, I think that that is kind of an important thing for the outside crypto community to, you know, bid into a project is to see that it's truly decentralized. But I think for users, for normal people, it doesn't matter. They don't care. And it's good that they're still working towards that. But, you know, they didn't rush it, I guess. And I, I really think that's fine. I don't see any issue with that. But we then get into wallets and swap services which i is not the second thing in the article but i want to touch on that to save the best for last so they're talking about how uh they're currently working with wallet services that will be able to hold coins during and after a trade that trade being the atomic swaps uh which i guess may not be atomic swaps anymore they may just be called the swaps but uh they said that only wallets from an approved kin wallet partner will be able to hold kin during the swap as to maintain the security once it's complete, the services can be used as a safe place to store your kin, and kin will be working. Uh, kin will be supported by leading hardware, desktop, and mobile wallets, giving holders and users the choice of where they store their kin during the swap. And once the migration is complete, the services will expand beyond the ecosystem. Oh, expand the ecosystem beyond consumer apps and improve the overall experience, so we can have a place safely to hold it off of exchanges, which are the next topic. Now. The first line of what they had to say really, really got to me uh, and made me very excited when they said exchanges are more important now than ever. So if you maybe don't completely understand cryptocurrencies, you know, you know, you know what an exchange is. I'm going to assume that for all of you. And while I do believe many of us are here because we think that Kent has a great vision and what they can do and what they will do is great and will have a really big impact on the world, something that I think I believe and most people in the community believe. I don't want to say at the end of the day, but there is no matter what a part of this for all of us that is to make money because that is why you're in cryptocurrency. If I was doing this about a company that had public stocks, you know, even if they're making solar panels for the entire world, that's great. At the end of the day, you want the stock price to go up. And I think everyone can agree that the kin price has not been truly reflective of the value that we all see in it and even consumers and non-investors see in it and the fact that and and the value that uh, it can create simply through apps and all this type of stuff so exchanges are really important to get it to more investors to inevitably raise the price up but to offer people the chance to get it because the two groups that right now really need to be offered the opportunity to get kin more clearly are consumers and investors and they've talked about for consumers that the plan is to make a feature within one of the apps maybe within many apps it doesn't matter almost like an in-app purchase where you can buy kin for money with your apple pay whatever it may even be a website where you can just enter your credit card information and buy kin but that is not here right now that is not the focus right now what they are focusing right on right now is getting to more investors, more people to see the great work this project has done, the great work they're continuing to doing, they are continuing to do, their vision and all of the good stuff 
that they have uh, coming, that they are making, that they are making work. And those investors will almost inevitably kind of give us a bump in price, which is great for the developers who've been granted kin. It's great for the holders as a, a reassurance, so to speak. But they wanted to say they've invested significant resources to work with select exchanges that will facilitate the migration to the kin blockchain while also creating liquidity for kin, which is so important and so good. But once kin is available on exchanges, they will perform a one-way swap one-to-one -one between the ERC-20 token and the kin coin, then the ERC-20 tokens will be burned. They say they have chosen reputable exchanges to facilitate this, this process, which to me, I read that as big exchanges because I love Mercatox. Mercatox is great. I'll put a Mercatox referral link in the description if you want to go buy kin, but it's not as uh, well known as others and therefore it can be scary to be having an, uh, you know, not an incredible amount of money because I'm a poor student, but an amount of money that you think has a lot of value or can have a lot of value somewhere that maybe you don't feel so safe. But they've chosen reputable exchanges to facilitate this process. They have thought of that ahead of time and planned for these groups that can migrate your kin over to be safe, trusted groups, well-established groups. And you know what kind of exchanges people use? Well-established ones. Yeah. So... In addition to using traditional exchanges, kin holders will also have the option to move their kin using an approved swap partner. The, these swap partners will basically be a service that act as a mediator between trading cryptocurrency platforms and users. Uh, so like web-based instant exchanges, almost in the sense of like a shapeshift. But by using that method, kin holders will have an almost instant method for moving ERC-20 tokens to the new kin coin. They also said very specifically, and this is very important because I get this question on my YouTube videos every now and then, there will not be an immediate time limit. So it's not as if you have your ERC-20 token. If you don't move it over within three days, bam, it's gone. It's burned. You will have time to move it over. Do not worry. And I think, though, however, once they've announced it, once they've announced how to do it, you should move it over because what you're holding, uh, you know, is just doesn't really have as much use. So... What's next to end the article, to end this video? The migration is currently underway for a test group of ecosystem apps. They're going to provide detailed instruction for Kin holders on how to move to the new blockchain once it's ready. Initially, Kin will be listed on a handful of exchanges and it will go live with a few swap and wallet services to begin the move to the Kin blockchain. So listed on a handful of exchanges to me is new listings, more exchanges, etc. They follow this by saying more exchanges, swap, and wallet services will be available shortly after to provide kin holders with the option to use the method they find most convenient and secure. Um, that's the end of the article. I am so goddamn excited. Um, I've had a lot of coffee, which is contributing to all of this, but no, I'm very sincerely excited. Um, Ted has always said that he... He wants to be able to open the floodgates. He wants to have everything in place and then be able to go full force all at once. And we are seeing that structure of force, that that coming together of different components right now. We are seeing it come together and we are going to see those floodgates open up within the coming weeks. So folks, this may be the only time I've ever said this in a video, but if you don't have kin right now, go out and buy some. If you're thinking about buying more, go out and get some. I'm not promising an increase in value because I hate doing that. I really don't like seeing price predictions, but this is the type of thing that does raise value. And this is as simply put as possible, adding value to the ecosystem. So folks, Kin, a lot is coming. A lot is coming very quickly. The Tapa Talk partnership goes live this month. The Unity SDK, Unity SDK, I believe, is supposed to go live at the end of this month. The Mad Lips app partnership, I think, is also supposed to go live this month because they said they were launching two partners in January. What more could you ask for, folks? Honestly, not much. There's, I, I, well, you could ask for more, but I think what they're doing accommodates for what we want. So, folks... Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more of me, you can follow me on Reddit or Twitter at the Kinformant. If you want to know a little bit more about me, go follow me on YouTube. Subscribe to me. It's Addison Schuster. It's my name. You can find it anywhere. I'll put a link to it. And if you want to help me be not such a broke college student, there are links below <laughs> to donate to PayPal and different cryptocurrencies to help keep 
this whole ship running. So, folks, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm the Kinformant. I'll see you later.